Welcome back to the show. On Saturday, we made a trek to Sealands Grove Speedway where their featured event was their 30 lap late model summer championship. Now noticeably absent from the event was all time winner and current points leader Jeff Ryan. Yes, now Jeff Ryan won the heat race, but then the car had engine problems, so he attempted to switch cars. When he did, that second car had a flat tire. He missed the B main, which disqualified him from competing in the main event. Jerry Bard would lead the 24 car field to the green with the 16 of Matt Cochran right on his heels during the opening laps. A couple of laps in, we have this battle for third between the three of Tim Wilson, 06 of Mike Lupfer, 24 of Dylan Yoder, and Kobe Fry in the 32. Fry rockets by on the outside to take the position. A caution on lap five sets up this restart. Bard starts to work towards the inside of Cochran while Fry runs the cushion. Exiting turn two, Cochran pulls away while Fry closes on Bard. As they head into turn three, Fry shoots low. Cochran does not get through the turn cleanly, allowing the 26 and 32 to close. Yet Cochran maintains the lead with Fry now in second. One of the strongest cars early in the race was the 27 of Jim Yoder. Here he challenges his son Dylan for a position. Fry chased Cochran for a number of laps. On the 13th circuit, the 16 encounters slower traffic. Cochran chooses to go high through the turns. With his path blocked, he cuts down low but spins after trying not to hit Fry's machine. This moved Bard up to second on the restart with Jim Yoder running in the third position. Yoder dives low but Bard uses the momentum from the top side to maintain the runner up spot. Up front, Fry continued to stretch out his lead even though he lapped more cars. The Yoders would both get by the 26 car for a position. Fry had one close call while leading. Here he makes contact with Dave Zona, yet maintains control and a sizable lead. A caution with four laps to go gave the Yoders and those still on the lead lap another chance to overtake Fry. Jim Yoder tries the low side, but Fry motors away going down the backstretch. And Colby Fry would go on to collect the $2,000 winner's check. Congratulations on your win, Colby. Now, when Matt Cochran tried to pass lap traffic on the outside, you took that as an opportunity to take the lead. Yeah, uh, uh, luckily, uh, the guy in the lap car slid up in front of him and actually off a four and uh, gave me a good chance to get a run on the bottom. And uh, that's ended up how we taking the lead, more or less. Yeah, now you had a huge lead, and then there was a caution with only four laps to go, which closed the gap. Yeah, uh, you can always use the expect a caution here. Um, always makes a little good for a better ending most of the time because we get spread out. But uh, I felt like we had a pretty good car, and uh, if we just stuck to the top and didn't make any mistakes, uh, we were going to be all right and bring home a victory. Now you've won quite a few championships this year. Yeah, uh, we uh, got the summer and spring championship, both of them here in both the ports so far this year. So it's been pretty good so far this year for uh, wins here at Port and Sealings Grove. So do you feel that all these championships have prepared you for the World of Outlaws for Labor Day weekend? Uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a really good race. Uh, a lot of good guys will be coming in, and time trials will be critical. Uh, you need to get a good time lap. So if we can knock down a good time trial lap and start up front, I think we have uh, just as good a chance as any of those guys that are taking home the cash. So. Excellent, and congratulations again. Thank you. Have a good night. Jim Yoder finished second ahead of his son Dylan. Jim Bernheisel came home fourth with Tim Wilson finishing fifth. In the 358 sprint main event, the 100 of Mike Walter would use the high side of one and two to take the lead from pool sitter Brian Garland. Going down the back stretch, the 29 of Derek Stewart begins to close on Garland. As they go through three and four, Garland bobbles on the bottom and Stewart shoots by to take the runner up position. The three of Pat Cannon is always a threat to win. He started in the 12th position, yet made it to sixth by lap five. There was a lot of slicing and dicing in the top five. Here, Josh Beard in the number five gets by Stewart for the runner-up position. When Walter came upon the sixth of Bill Sherman, he went to his outside while Beard dove low and took over the top spot. There were some great battles within the top five. While Cannon chased Stewart, he also had to contend with the 76 of Larry Kelleher. A late caution set up a two-lap shootout. On the white flag lap, Beard still led with the points leader Jason Schultz in the number two, running second. They make contact entering turn three. Schultz continued on while Beard ends up against the wall. 
However, the incident cut Schultz's right rear tire. This moved Cannon to the point, with Kelleher now up to the second position. Kelleher tries to make the bottom groove work, but Cannon pulls away by a few car lengths. Kelleher dives low into three and four, yet he could not keep Pat Cannon from winning his sixth race of the season. Well, congratulations on your win, Pat. Now, you started in 12th position, and then you took the lead. Yeah, we started back in 12th. Uh, didn't get a good start, really, tonight. We uh, heard a shock in the heat race. Didn't really find out until feature time. It was a little too late, and we, uh, we struggled a little bit tonight, but kind of got a gift. Uh, you know, sometimes you're good, and sometimes you're lucky, and we, uh, we got a little lucky tonight, but uh, we'll take it. Right, you were in third place with one lap to go. Yeah, we got the third there, and uh, those two guys are better than me, and just kind of riding there, and uh, uh, they both went for the same spot, you know, getting down into three, and uh, we came out with the win. Uh, like I said, we'll take it. Uh, um, I just want to say our thoughts and prayers are with uh, Kramer Williamson. I know he's airlifted out of Lincoln tonight, so I hope everything's okay. Now we've seen you in the four tens. Where is that going to go? Uh, we're we're trying to work on it to get better. We're, it's a it's a tough deal the four tens. Uh, you know, some nights we've been pretty even fast here with it and aboard a few times and the Grover's struggling, but we're working through with it. Uh, so hopefully uh, we get it better and get competitive like we are in the 358 and 360. And we'll see how the year plays out. Okay, well, good luck with that and congratulations again. Thank you. So Pat Cannon beats Larry Kelleher in a one-lap shootout. Cody Keller, Derek Locke, and Ryan Kissinger finished third through fifth. Well, this was the first time in a few years that Pit Pass has made it to Sealands Grove Speedway. It was a great night of racing. We thoroughly enjoyed it, highly recommend it, and we will be back, Sealands Grove. Well, on Sunday, I made my first ever trip to Sportsman Speedway, where their featured event was a $1,000 to win 358 modified feature. We will have those highlights and more when Pit Pass returns. WR Hickey is going platinum with the triple filtered smooth finish and top shelf taste of Bud Light Platinum. WR Hickey is your local Anheuser-Busch master distributor, ensuring that all your favorite beers like Bud Light, Bud Light Lime, Bud Light Limerita, Bud Light Strawberryita, and Black Crown are delivered fresh from the brewery to our store. Let our beer runners bring your favorite Anheuser-Busch beer right to your car. WR Hickey Beer Distributor, East College Avenue State College.